this area. And uh, the way that God has blessed us. Come a long way since then. And uh, Tom mentioned some of the changes, building the property and so forth. And I thought as he was saying that, I don't have the same hairstyle I used to have. <laughs> Tell the Lord all the time how thankful I am for the people that He put in our lives over the years. We would not be where we are today had it not been for you and your sacrifice and your giving. I look over this congregation today and I can tell many experiences from the lives of many that are here. I want to thank you for making us who we are. Tom has already mentioned it had not been for the faithful people that gave in the early years and had helped give through the years, we would not be where we are today. I posted on Facebook and sent out announcements that I was going to be preaching today. I began praying and asking the Lord, I said, give me direction for a message this morning, uh, for this morning. And I prayed and asked, went long after the announcement was gone out that I was going to be preaching. I had somebody call me on the, on the phone and uh, said, I don't know what you're going to be preaching that morning, but here's what I, I, I would like for you to preach if you feel like it. <laughs> so they told me what they'd like for me to preach on. And then... A day or two later, I was talking to somebody and said, I hear you're going to be preaching uh, Sunday morning. Uh, I sure would like to hear that message. And they talked about the message they'd like to hear. And then a few I've never tried to preach sitting down. But I was, I was talking about my wife and how much I appreciate her. And uh, when the Lord called me to preach, she was right there with me. And I never will forget the uh, day that I walked in and told her that the Lord is dealing with me about moving from Louisiana to the East Coast. And uh, she accepted that. And uh, so here we are. But she's never, any time I've ever said, I think the Lord wants us to do this, she's always been right there and ready and willing to do it. I appreciate her and my children, sons, and foster daughters that are here today. And all that we've been through through the years. Good and bad. Yeah. If you uh, have your Bible study, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand the world is framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And that is a statement of the purest form of faith. Things made out of those things that do not appear. Now, we can create something out of things that we already have. And, uh, but to create something out of nothing. That's the purest form of creation. And the Bible said, through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. And if you read scripture, it says in the beginning, God said. And it started talking about the things that came into existence by the spoken word of God. And the scripture goes on in this particular area and talks about the faith of Abel, the faith of Enoch. And it says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. <coughs> to read this, and some of you were here times past when some of these things happened. You've heard about them before. Amen. But it was a miracle faith several years ago when a young man was stationed here at the Air Force Base 
was part of the assembly and broke his arm one morning while they were loading an aircraft. He came to service the next night. And we were in revival service and we were praying for people. And during that prayer time, he came by and to be prayed for and we laid hands on him and prayed for him. And uh, he went over next door into the Sunday school area and cut the cast off his arm. Come running back into the sanctuary. He said, Look, he said, God has healed me. Amen. And he was just waving his arm back and forth. And uh, the next morning, when he got to the base, somebody had told his commanding officer what he had done. His commanding officer called him in and he said, I want you to know we could have you court martial for what you've done. He said, You're part of the military, he said, you're part of the United States government. He said, you had no right to cut that cast off of your arm. And that young man looked back to him. He swung his arm back and forth. He said, well, the Lord healed me. And uh, his commanding officer says, that's what you say. He said, I want you to get to the dispensary, and I want you to have x-rays made of the arm and bring them back to me. So he went to, this, to the dispensary and had x-rays made. And that uh, the doctor came out and those x-rays to see and he said, I don't understand this. He said, the x-rays that we took a few days ago showed your arm broken in two places. He said, now we can't find any of them. And the man said, oh, you God healed me. Just things that, uh, that nature. In the late 60s, we were going to heaven. Sicknesses come, marriages will fail, and prayers will not be answered. They will not be answered the way that you think they should. You go to your prayer closet, and you pray, and you pray, and you pray, and nothing happens. After a while, you stagger out crying, God, where are you? Days, weeks, months, and even years may pass. And you do not seem to get an answer from the Lord. What do you do? You live for God anyhow. You love God anyhow. And just because things do not happen like that we think that they should, that does not change God. See, he's God when the sun shines. He's God when the rain's falling. He's God on the mountaintop. He's God in the valley. He's God when prayers are answered. He's God when prayers are not answered. So there's a side of faith that lives for God, that loves God, that praises God that worships God, that prays to God because we know He's God and it's a thing to do. Amen. It's called going the second mile as somebody mentioned today. Going the second mile. That's when you walk on when things are not going like you want them to go. You go on when things are not happening like you want them to happen. That's the, the second side of faith. First side is a miracle faith that brings about those things that you're praying for. The second side is when you pray and you don't get it. Right. And you just keep on keeping on. Amen. That's uh, Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoiding profane, profane babblings and opposition to the science falsely so called. And that is when God can have faith in us. God have faith in us. And though Job was not receiving what he had received prior, was not blessed in the manner that he had prior had been blessed prior. He kept 
living for God. He kept loving God. He kept being faithful to God. Sometimes the Lord puts things in our life to see if we're going to remain faithful when we're not getting what we want. We're getting what we ask for. I remember the story of years ago when I first started preaching. There was a young man pastoring in Beaumont, Texas. And his dad was pastoring there. And he would go every Sunday morning pick up a uh, widow lady and her two small children. And he would pick them up and bring them to church. And he said, during the time he was picking them up, she never missed a service. He'd get there on Sunday morning, Sunday night. She was standing at the door with the children ready to go. And when he was graduating from high school, his dad gave him a new car. So he told his dad, he said, you've given me a new car. I'm going to take my old car and give it to this lady so she'll have transportation. So she wants to come to church. There's no way to come to church. He said, I'm going to give her my car. And uh, that way she'll have transportation. So... He gave her the car. First Sunday, she didn't, she didn't come to church. Next Sunday, she didn't come to church. The next Sunday, she didn't come to church. He said, in fact, she never came back to church. And he told his dad, he said, you know, it's, it's sad. He said, during the time that I was picking her up, she was as faithful as she could be. But when I gave her my car, she always had someplace else to go. Either go on a picnic with the kids or go see her grandmother. She never had time to come to church. And I think sometimes a lot of people are not blessed because God knows He cannot trust them with the blessing. Where you are found, let me encourage you to develop the faith you need in all the areas your life, that God will not, that God will, God's will and purpose can be fulfilled. Let me testify to the fact this, this morning that God has never failed us. He didn't always answer our prayers in the way and manner we thought it, he should answer them, but he's never failed us. He's always been there. In fact, the scripture tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us, but that he will be with us even to the end of the world. At times we don't get what we want, but then sometimes it would be a harm to us if we did. And I thank the Lord again for my wife because all through the years when situations, conditions have arisen, we have prayed, sought the direction of God, and He's never failed to give us the right answer. Like I say, it might not be the answer we want, but He's never failed to give us the right answer. In fact, I know on many occasions we've prayed about situations, conditions, I ever preached. <laughs> I do appreciate everybody that's here today and Thank you so much for coming, and uh, you get to a place in life and you think of things that you do, and, and you realize that this may be the last time you do them. I rest assured, I have no complaints. God has been good to me and my family.